Greetings and welcome. I hope that you are doing well. We've just about made it through Readathon month and it is September 30th as I'm recording this. So hopefully it gets posted tonight and you're able to see it still in September. We are here to talk about the final books that we'll be talking about. And I wasn't going to discuss one of these books, the second one, because I had thought I've talked about it before, but then I realized that I had only talked about it as an additional book, so I've never really talked about it in depth. So we're going to rectify that here today. Today's first book is a book that I have loved ever since I read it, and it's the book that I read to fulfill the prompt to read an emotional read. And that book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. The second book that I read was to fulfill the prompt to read an author's debut novel. That book is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Honestly, either of these books could have worked for either prompt. This is Charlotte Bronte's first published book, and this is a very emotional read. Why am I talking about these two books together? At the core, they are similar in that each of the main characters gets to a point where they're restless in their life and they want something more. Jane Eyre is the story of an orphan who is 10 years old when we meet her. This was published in 1847 and it's set in that time. Jane lives with her uncle's widow and their two daughters and son. But Jane is an outsider in this family group. She is neither understood nor loved. And after an incident with her cousin, John, who has bullied her her whole life, Jane is sent to the Lowood Institution, which is a school for impoverished and orphaned girls. Unknown to the public, the conditions at the school are pretty bleak. The food isn't consistently well cooked. If the gruel gets burnt, they have to eat burnt gruel. Um, they're subjected to arcane punishments and they're not really that well cared for either. And on cold winter days, the water in their room often freezes. They're not able to wash or clean. It's the administrator's view, Reverend Brocklehurst, that since the girls are going to go on to have lives where they work, they should deny themselves comfort. Eventually, illness breaks out at the school, and because of the poor conditions, it spreads quickly from student to student, and this does get the public's attention. And improvements are made. Jane attends Lowood School for six years as a student and two years as a teacher. But when the headmistress who was there when she began teaching leaves, there's no one left who Jane can actually relate to and speak with on a meaningful level. And so she seeks other opportunities. She is offered the position of governess to Adele, an orphan who lives at Thornfield Hall. And although she knows no one in the area and she knows nothing about Thornfield or the owner. She accepts the position. Here Jane finds satisfaction in the job that she does and she does well and she finds a friend in Mrs. Fairfax, the housekeeper. But there is something strange going on at Thornfield. Jane hears noises from above her and mysterious laughter. She's told it's one of the servants who has been with the Rochester family for years. And what of the Rochesters? There is only one left, Edward, or as the staff calls him, Mr. Rochester. He is the last remaining Rochester, and he is away from home a lot and rarely returns. When he does make appearance, he turns Jane's world upside down. Mr. Rochester is moody and gruff. He commands instead of asking, and his wishes are met. Jane finds in him, however, someone she can truly converse with. But his presence at Thornfield does not put an end to the mysterious noises and laughter. 
In some ways, the situation intensifies when he returns. What is really going on? And what are Edward Rochester's secrets? This book is not for everyone. I remember when I began a previous job at a bookstore and we were walking through, I was walking through with my department lead and I was so surprised to hear her take on Jane Eyre, a book she was made to read in high school and did not like at all. And to me, it was as if she was describing a completely different book. So what are some things to be aware of before reading this book? It's not a fast-paced book. It takes all of 10 chapters to lay out the background information you need to know. Jane Eyre, the character, feels things deeply and she has a deeply held sense of ethics, but they aren't necessarily the ethics of her day or the ethics of those in charge. Mr. Rochester is not your typical leading man, and Jane sees and enumerates his faults. You might find yourself asking why she even talks to him. Jane is comfortable with the things that she's comfortable with, which aren't necessarily things that everybody is comfortable with. Um, for instance, she doesn't like praise, especially if she feels that it's undeserved. I think those of us who love Jane Eyre are a little or a lot like her. So what can you read for a similar experience? I'm going to suggest two books. One is from around the same time period as Jane Eyre and the other is from 2019. So the first book is by Charlotte Bronte's sister, Emily. It is Wuthering Heights. This is definitely a gothic story. There are feelings of fear and haunting throughout the book. And it's the story of Catherine and Heathcliff. Heathcliff is a poor abandoned child that Catherine and Hindley's father bring home and adopts. And he expects his children to interact with Heathcliff as if he were their brother. Kathy's brother despises Heathcliff. And when he takes over his father's estate, he forces Heathcliff to go work with the servants and he treats him as a servant instead of as his adopted brother. Catherine is torn. At times she runs wild with Heathcliff, but she's also drawn to the family's refined neighbors, the Lintons. And when she makes her decision on which way she's going to go, not everybody is happy. Heathcliff changes throughout the story, though perhaps not always in the best of ways. This is another book that I like, and with the spooky season coming up, it's especially a perfect read for this time of year. The other book I'll mention is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Set in the late 20 teens, it tells the story of Rowan, who responds to an ad for a nanny in the Scottish Highlands. There are two young daughters, one teen sister. The teen girl is off and away at school, comes home for the weekends. Almost immediately upon starting the job, Rowan is left by the parents with the two young girls while the parents go away to a work conference. Apparently the ghosts are not happy. At night she hears strange noises and voices coming from above her room and windows that she knows she closed are later found open. It definitely has creepy vibes. And now, Looking for Alaska by John Green. And this is the author's first book, and it's a young adult novel. Miles Halter is fascinated by famous people's last words, but he's restless at home in Orlando, and he transfers to a private school in Alabama. And he does this to, in the last words of poet Francois Rabelais, go to seek the great perhaps. Miles doesn't fit in with the rich kids, the weekday warriors, 
But he forms friendships with his roommate Chip, also known as the Colonel, Chip's friend Kumi, and the beautiful and unpredictable Alaska. Alaska is confident. She is focused on subverting the male patriarchy, and she's unforgettable. But she's also mercurial and deeply unhappy. What do these friends like to do? Often they are planning and carrying out elaborate pranks on the weekday warriors. As he progresses through the school year, Miles has amazing experiences, finds acceptance with his friends, and falls more and more for Alaska. When tragedy strikes, there are so many questions that are unanswered and they share a yearning for answers. The friends want to truly understand what happened and they want to deal with their part in the tragedy. There's so much to love about the story. The structure is amazing. From it, you know that something's going to happen, but you have no idea what that thing is, but you know it's going to be life-changing. You're going to care about these characters because they are full and real people. The Colonel doesn't just want to achieve things so that he can achieve them. He wants to be able to care for his mom who has always been there for him. Alaska isn't just confident. She also is fragile and desperate to escape the past. These aren't flat characters. And the emotional journey of the characters is rich and complicated. So what are some similar reads? This is difficult to answer because it's hard to find someone else who writes like John Green, but I don't want to just list a bunch of John Green books here. However, Paper Towns is an amazing book to follow up looking for Alaska. Although I don't have a copy with me, I would also suggest The Bell Jar by Sylvia Platt. It's semi-autobiographical, and the main character, Esther, is trying to deal with her worsening mental health. So for my non-reading prompts for both of these titles, I watched a movie adaptation or a series adaptation of each of these novels. So for Jane Eyre, this time around, I watched the 2011 movie adaptation with Mia Boschakowska and Michael Fassbender. And there are lots of versions of Jane Eyre. I have watched a few others. This time I went with this one. I thought that the representation of Jane was not as emotional as I perceive her to be. So I guess I would give that 2.5 to 3 stars out of 5. I also watched the 2019 Hulu series adaptation of Looking for Alaska. They've made some changes to the story, and some of them, such as portraying the eagle as more human, were pretty good. Other changes didn't hurt the story, but they did change the story that you're familiar with if you've read Looking for Alaska. And overall, I guess I would give this adaptation four stars out of five. And there we are. I hope that you enjoyed my readathon month and all the books that we've talked about. I especially hope that today you enjoyed hearing about Jane Eyre and finally looking for Alaska. And it's kind of interesting that I've never talked about those two books before because they are honestly two of my favorite books. I will be back very soon when we will talk about my October reads, and I think that we'll focus on seasonal reads, so they will be autumnal or they will be spooky season reads. I hope that you will join me then, and until then, I hope that you enjoy all that you do and all that you read. And thank you.